What up guys, Dr. Pinesett here, the pre-med product expert, and uh, I'm waiting for another liver transplant to start. <laughs> Sitting and waiting for organs to get here. Uh, but I thought I'd take a second and talk to you guys about this study doubt, this study anxiety that then morphs into test anxiety that so many of us suffer from. And uh, this actually comes, Kasim, what up? This comes, she comes from my private Facebook group, The Cult of Greatness. Uh, it's a free Facebook group if you want to join. Uh, but I asked the students what they wanted to talk about. And something that came up was, how do we overcome this doubt? How do we overcome this self, this something inside of us that tells us we aren't good enough, we aren't uh, acceptable, we, we don't have what it takes to be great? And I don't know about you guys and how common this is, but I get a lot of students who ask me about this who feel these things, and I felt these things. So I want to assure you that it's normal to have doubts. It's normal to, to be down on yourselves at points. Uh, but it feels great when you can get to the other side of that, when you can get past all the doubt and you are flooded with confidence and excitement about your abilities and about the results you're gonna get from those abilities. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is how do we go from where many of you guys are uh, with kind of doubting yourselves and, and being anxious all the time and not being certain about your grades and about your career to a place where you can uh, know that you'll be successful. Um, and someone just asked what the name of my Facebook group is. It's called The Cult of Greatness because we are a cult and we are striving from greatness. We believe in our greatness because we move from that insecurity into this greatness. And it's an awesome place to be because it's a really supportive community. So if you're in that doubt phase, there are people there who will build you up and support you and uh, help you uh, find your self-confidence. Uh, so anyway, all right. So uh, <laughs> to this topic, I just got page, they're actually going to bring the liver down, so it's going to make this quick. But what I will say is that doubt is very common, anxiety is very common. We are wired as people, right? Going back to our times when we were cavemen and, and uh, we lived in a time where we were attacked by woolly mammoths and tempted tigers, we have this instinct for constantly being, not skeptical, but being alert, being aware, and being in doubt that we're not safe, right? We, we feel this impending sense of danger, and that's a survival mechanism. And now what we have to do is we have to morph that and kind of mute that. And the way we do that is by creating a sense of safety in our lives, a sense of security in our lives. And as you guys know, right, what, what makes you feel safe and secure in your house? So when you're at home and, oh my gosh, burgers, burglars come get me, what sort of things make you feel safe in your house? And I'm going to turn a light on here. For some reason, the lights, the hospital's trying to save money, the auto lights just turned off, so... Uh, while you guys think about that, okay, perfect. Kasim said locks. So I don't know what everybody else was saying, but locks, right? Uh, the cops, familiar environment, all great things. Why do locks make us feel good? Because they are a tried and true mechanism, a barrier that prevents burglars from coming in and terrorizing you, right? They keep you from danger. Why do cops being around make you feel good? Because they are a deterrent to bad behavior, right? They're there to protect and to serve you, right? They are a resource to you, right? Familiar environment. What about a familiar environment makes you feel good? Because you've been there before, you've not had an issue, you've been safe, so therefore you feel safe. And so we'll just stick with those three things but when it comes to studying, right, it, we don't even think about it, but it requires the exact same thing. If you're gonna feel safe, if you're gonna lose the doubt, if you're gonna lose the anxiety, you need resources and concrete mechanisms that are protective of your study safety, that are gonna assure your study success. Does that make sense? Before I go any further, does that make sense to you guys? Do you guys get where I'm going with this? If it makes sense to you right now, like the video. Does that make sense? So many of us go through studying, going through classes, we are unarmed. We have doors that are wide open, right? We're in that neighborhood where the police don't come. We're in the neighborhood where you, you're unfamiliar. You just moved to this neighborhood, seems a little shady. You see some characters on the corner, you know, pants below their butt, or like my, my patient earlier, 
who had skinhead tattooed on his forehead. If he was living in my neighborhood, that would make me feel unsafe. And for many of you guys, your studying, your school life is that. It's the dangerous neighborhood with no cops, with no locks, with the gang members on every corner. And you wonder why you don't feel safe and secure and like, oh, I can deliver. And so what you have to do to change that pattern is you have to change yourself. You have to put in place mechanisms to protect yourself. Let's go. You have to put in mechanisms to protect yourself, right? And so you see, I'm here in the lounge right now. Someone's coming to get some food. <laughs> um, you have to put in mechanisms to protect yourself and your grades. And it starts with first, right? Creating mechanisms. So like locks on doors, what are your study strategies? And more importantly, right? So how do locks, police officers, fire department, neighborhood watch, how do they all come together? They come together in a system. So I think the first step is get some strategies, uh, get some, some tools you can use, some resources to help you study. That's a start, right? That's a bare minimum. That's locks of the door. That's the padlock. That's all these things. But then what really will take you and make you very secure, right? And we'll, and we'll establish this pattern of success that will get rid of the doubt is when you take a bunch of separate things and you're actually able to put them together in a system that's comprehensive so you're covered against multiple issues. So I've got my lock. If they get to the lock, I call the police. And if they get to the police, I've got my baseball bat in the bedroom. If you're like me, I got a baseball bat in my bed. You can come get some of the baseball bat if you want it, right? All those things. Some people have guns now, whatever it is, but there's multiple mechanisms that make you feel extra safe. That's really where high level studying occurs. And for me, creating a study system, re like it revolutionized my life. And that's what I teach other students now, and it revolutionizes their life. But I think people get hung up on tips and, and hacks, and that's great. The lock by itself is great, but if the rest of your house is made of glass and there's gang members everywhere, it's a problem. So what I would rather have is a systemic, systematic safety all around me. I want to make sure, no matter what is thrown at me in a course, no matter what's going on, no matter what the chaos is, no matter how many classes I'm taking, I have clear, concise mechanisms that work together to create multiple barriers to me being in danger of failing a class. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of abstract. I'm using a neighborhood safety to talk about study safety, but it really is the same thing. You guys are unarmed, you guys have no defense mechanisms for your classes, and you wonder why you feel anxious about your grades. Truthfully, like you, you literally, it's like showing up, it's like showing up to a debate and you, you've never, you haven't prepared. I, I, like you, you got, you, you can't show up to a game with, with no baseball bat and expect to be able to hit a home run. Like, how, how are we doing that? <laughs> right? So I think really when you want to change how you feel about things terms of anxiety, you have to first start by giving yourself a reason not to be anxious. Get some skills. Get some strategies. And then get systems, which is really where the power takes off through the roof because you're covered on all sides. And then once you do that, right, this is where the familiar neighborhood comes from. If you can get these skills, get these strategies, get these systems in place, and then you can execute these, these systems over and over and over again. Oh, somebody just had a baby. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's special. Uh, so... You, impl you implement and you execute these things over and over and over and over again. Because for some of you guys, what makes you guys anxious is that you've had so much failure in the past. You feel good and you come short. Feel good and come short. And so you don't know how to trust yourself. But if you can change that paradigm, get the structure in place, and then execute it a couple times, have some success, then you will be in a position where you're like, you can look back and instead of having nightmares, you have positive visions. Oh yeah, I remember I was, I was really struggling, but I was pushing through using my system and I came out on top. And then, you know, I was really hit and I used my system and I came out on top. And if you can do that repeatedly, you build that up, pretty soon you feel unstoppable. So people always chip off my confidence and like, where's this confidence come from? My confidence comes because I plan everything out to a T. 
There's systems involved for everything. And then I've had these systems in place and I tweak them, but the core systems have been in place for so long and I've had so much success doing them, I'm confident that no matter what happens, it's gonna be successful. It's, gonna, it's going to work, right? Like why does, do I feel so good about my MCAT course or my study course or my admissions course? Because guys, I've been doing this stuff for forever and it's a passion of mine, right? And I, and I look at it and I'm critical of it, so I don't, I don't have to feel insecure about telling you guys this is the place you need to be, my channel, my courses, this is the place you need to be. I, I can't, how can I not be confident about it? It works time after time. I, 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 I don't, it's consistent. If it's executed, it works. So that's what I will say. People try to like wish themselves out of anxiety, wish themselves out of doubt. You can't do that. You gotta have systems and then you go. And Audrey just said, because of my past failures, I'm now an anxious and fearful person when it comes to pursuing something great, like pursuing my dream career. And that's what happens, right? And that's why so many of us in life, we settle because we've had a bad experience when we tried to reach or we half-ass tried to reach and we came up short and so we don't want to reach again because we don't, we don't want to experience that level of, of letdown. Anybody, is anybody there? Is anybody there with Audrey where your past experience doesn't allow you to succeed? Where it's that strong of a mental block where you can't even put it forward to get there? Who can relate to that? Right, Terry says, absolutely. Right, Rita says, I am. Joyce says, yep. S. Gandhi says, yes. Ileana says, yes. <laughs> Cece says, been there, done that. Derek says, yes, right? That's what it is. But it, it won't happen overnight, but you have to start somewhere. You have to have a belief. And I think where that comes from, this other part, right, is if you're around other people who've been successful and they're telling you you're on the right path, that's how you can start to have a little bit of a positive mindset. I think that's why people around me succeed, is because I'm telling them, listen, you got what you need, just put it in place, and I know right now it's hard, it's gonna work. It's like with MCAT, people freak out and take my MCAT course, and I teach them question-based learning because they're not used to failing at such a high level. <laughs> and I'm like, don't worry, all those misses are gonna come back. And then it's funny, because people hit this curve where all those misses all of a sudden start to be makes. And they start seeing their critical thinking improving, their critical analysis improving, and their scores improving. I just got an email from someone yesterday whose score went from a 495 to 510. Which, if you guys are familiar with MCAT scoring, going from 495 to 510 is incredible. And this student did that, and he said it was literally, I, I just saw all of a sudden points. At first, right, I was, I was here, I wasn't getting questions right, I wasn't getting questions. All of a sudden, I just start seeing, I just start seeing through the passage and it's just as clear. And I'm finishing things quicker and quicker and quicker. And my scores went up. And next thing I know, now I'm at a 510. Just finished my MCAT 510. Bam. It's beautiful. And that's not going to be everybody. But the system is there if you can work it and get it done to go. All right? So anyway, I got to go and do a liver transplant right now. But I just want to get on here and tell you guys, don't doubt yourselves. Instead, know that you can be better and you got to get somewhere and get better. You got to get skills. You got to invest in yourself and your knowledge and, and get educated and get some skills, strategy, systems to get in place and start having that success and put yourself around people who believe in you and who have had success themselves who can tell you you're on the right path and pull you forward. All right? If you like this video, make sure you like, take time, like the video. If you're new to this, subscribe, turn on live notifications, and I will see you guys. I'm having a free study webinar tomorrow. I'll put the link in the box below when I get done here, but free study webinar tomorrow. If you can't make it, you can register. I send out the replay. It's going to be off the hook. It's going to be amazing. And then we start our study boot camp next week. We also have our med school interview boot camp starting on Tuesday, so I'll see you guys later.